This is the seventh video on introductory modelling. The particular focus of this video is springs in series. We're going to assume that students are already familiar with how to model springs in parallel. That was covered in the previous video. And this video extends those results by looking at springs in series. And it also extends the results on analogies with electrical circuits of resistors. Before we start, however, we need to clarify what we mean by a series arrangement for mechanical systems. Now, a mechanical systems in series, we assume that the force is the same in all the components, but the components can have independent extensions or movements. So that's really important. A series arrangement, the components share the same force, but can have independent extensions or movements. As ever, we're going to assume no mass components or acceleration, so the focus is on steady state. A reminder then of the background. If we have a simple spring with an extension E, an applied force F, and a stiffness K, then the model is F equals KX. However, it is possible that both ends of the spring are moving. So one end might be moving by Y, and the other end might be moving by x. So in this particular case, the extension is E equals x minus y. So in that case, a corresponding equation would be F equals k into x minus y. And there will be times when this expression is more useful than the one above. What do we do then if we have two springs in series? Well, the first thing we always do in all these problems is annotate the diagram. So we've got an applied force F there. Because these springs are in series, then the force between the two springs here is also F. Now, I can put an extension for spring 1 as E1, and I can put at the end here, now I'm going to be a bit clever here, I'm going to put E, because at this end it's going to be the total extension of the two springs, because they're joined together. But what I will do is I'll mark in here that there's an E2, which is the extension of the second spring. So what we've got, if I write it down below here, is that E equals E1 plus E2. So the total extension is the extension of spring 1 plus the extension of spring 2. Now let's put down the spring constants, K1 and K2. Now what I can do is I can use the information on this annotated diagram to decide what's going on. Well, first of all, Let's decide what E1 is. Well, if I look at this first spring here, then what I've got is F equals K1 E1. And if I look at this second spring here, I've got F equals K2 E2. So if I go back and now write my extensions again, so I've got E equals E1 plus E2. And you can see that E1 is F over K1. E2 is F over K2. So this is my model for springs in series. E, the overall extension, is F over K1 plus F over K2. Now I can rearrange that as here, or I can put it into a standard form over here where I've got force equals the overall extension times some constant KT, where that KT is 1 over 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. Let's compare that then with a single spring, as we've done before. So you'll see the <coughs> extension equation, F equals E times K1, if I have a single spring. Or if I have two springs in series, I end up with this expression here. Very different. If I look at the extension, you've got the extension with one spring is F over K1. The extension with two springs in series F over K1 plus F over K2. So the key point, and you'll notice this sort of concept has come up before, the extensions add. When you put two springs in series, the extensions add, so the overall extension is increased. If the overall extension is increased, then the effective stiffness must have reduced. Some analogies then. Analogies with resistors in parallel. Here's my um, two springs in series. I'm not going to annotate it because we've done it before. And you'll see here's the model that we had. We had E equals F over K1 plus F over K2. So we had an applied force F 
and uh, spring constant k1 and k2 and that was my model or in the more normal form I could have written it as f equals e into 1 over 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. Now let's compare that with parallel resistors over here. Now with parallel resistors we've got this expression the total current is V over R1 plus R2 and you notice that's got exactly the same structure as this expression here E equals F over K1 plus F over K2 or similarly if you look at this result V equals I divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 you'll see that's got the same structure as this expression here so what's the analogies for springs in series the extensions add whereas for resistors in parallel the currents add Springs in series have the same force across both springs, whereas resistors in parallel have got the same voltage across both resistors. So there's a clear analogy between the two. What happens then if we have many springs in series? Now given this is now quite a late video in this sequence, and students will have seen this trick many times before, hopefully it's obvious that all we need to do is add the extensions for all of the springs. So what we're going to do is say the total expansion is the extension of spring 1 plus the extension of spring 2 plus the extension of spring 3 and so on which gives you this model here. I can rearrange that model to get force on its own and extension times a constant on the other side there it is and what that gives me is an effective stiffness here in the brackets kt which is 1 over 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus 1 over k3 and so on. Some conclusions then. For springs in series the overall extension is the sum of the extensions for each spring and therefore the overall extension is greater than an individual extension for a single spring and the overall stiffness must be less than the individual stiffness for a single spring. And the formula you need to use, and you'll have recognized this by now because it's the same as for parallel resistors, parallel pipes, and parallel conductors, is stiffness kT is 1 over 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus 1 over k3, and so on.